Hi everyone, I'm Julie. I'm a 3D artist and a content creator. Usually I model stuff like this. In this series I'm gonna show you how I modeled five cute mini isometric rooms. And today we're starting with the bathroom scene. Here's what the end result is gonna look like. I wanted to make this a part of five room series. I got inspired by these beautiful isometric rooms I see on Instagram. These are made by the artists that I follow and whose work I absolutely adore. Reference gathering is a very important part of my creative process. I usually pick a few references for the style and technique I want to try out, and photos of the objects that I'm going to be modeling. Here you can see I started with the most general big shape, the cube itself. And the second thing I did was I added the camera and adjusted its angle. I think it's really important to start with the broadest compositional strokes possible. Here when I have the angle all set up, I'm adding big elements of the room, furniture, I'm adding a bathtub, a kitchen cabinet, a mirror. I know what I wanted to have in this scene, but I don't have like a particular composition in mind, so I usually don't even make 2D sketches of things. This is how I figure out what I want in the room, this is how I figure out the composition. It's just a simple block out that I do. Now that the bigger compositional elements are added, I'm thinking what would be the feature of this room? What makes it special? I knew I wanted to replicate the feeling of getting home from work and relaxing in a warm, nice bathtub. I imagined this room to be quite a sophisticated room lit by some cozy candlelight reflecting in the fancy, nice, shiny tiles. That's why I went and added the tiles after I had bigger elements of the room already placed. After I'm done adding a feature of the room, I'm trying to set a tone. Here I'm imagining uh, a cozy evening, so I want some nice warm light coming from the outside. I want to set the atmosphere for the piece. The inspiration for this room was a distant memory of an advertisement of some shampoo that I saw as a child. I imagine it was a French bathroom with a very fancy bathtub and what I remember the most is a very cool shower curtain and a curtain rod. So this is what I was going for here. Here I'm making a kitchen sink cabinet. I use subdivision surface modeling technique where I add subdivision surface modifier and then add edge loops to define the shape. Here you can see me make the sides of the cabinet puffier. This is because of the general style that I'm usually going for. I want things to look friendly, I want them to look very simplified and stylized. That's actually the main reason why I'm using subdiv technique in the first place. It gives you less rigid forms. Even if I'm going for something man-made, like a kitchen sink or a cabinet, subdiv almost makes it look like it's made out of clay. And that is definitely the look that I like. I wanted this bathroom to have this fancy mirror from Pinterest, so I'm just using a regular cylinder and then using shear modifier to get this angled effect. Here are just some simple inserts and a bevel modifier, and we have a pretty nice, simple looking mirror. Here's the point where I decided to add a wood texture. Everything else besides this texture is going to be made with shaders. So just procedural colors, basically. Things that are going to be metallic, going to be metallic and shiny some emissive materials, but mostly just solid colors. Adding a texture to this look, I think makes it, especially wooden texture, I think makes it look a little bit more like a toy, gives that sense of scale that I enjoy, while adding more than one texture would take this piece from stylized to more realistic, and this is just not the style that I'm personally going for. By the way, looking at this faucet makes me realize that I probably should have gone a little bit more low poly in this case, but in general I don't try to limit the poly count in the scenes that are just illustrations. When I'm making something that I know is going to be in the game, that's going to be a game asset, I usually try to 
get very optimized geometry. Game engines these days are pretty powerful, so when I'm saying low poly, it doesn't necessarily have to be like artistic low poly style, it just has to not have extra geometry that you don't need there to be. But in a case of illustration like this, I prioritize the look of the assets. I want the rounded edges to look smooth, so I add a little bit more polys than you would probably need there. Here I'm using Add Primitive Cylinder tool on the left in the toolbar to make this lamp, and then I just bevel a couple of edge loops to get the round shape of it. Here you can see that I added the nail using a different tool. I used Add Geometry that is a part of Quick Menu add-on that I use. It's one of the very few add-ons that I use that don't come pre-installed with Blender. Actually, I have a whole entire video on my personal YouTube channel on how I set up Blender and all the add-ons that I enable, but to summarize it, I usually try to not rely on external add-ons too much, just because if something breaks or the developers of the add-on don't want to support it anymore, I'm going to have a lot of trouble if my essential workflow is depending on it. Here you can see me rotating the faucet handle to make it look like the faucet is open. I actually do that to add some life to the scene so that it doesn't look like an architectural render, but more like a lived-in environment. Here you can see me starting to work on the shower curtain. What I'm doing here is just simple polygonal modeling, basically the same thing you've seen me do the whole time lapse. I add subdivision surface modifier and manipulate some edges and vertices. Another way to do this would be to use cloth simulation or physics simulation. That approach gives you better looking realistic results, but here I'm not going for realism. That's why I'm choosing to model the curtain by manipulating the vertices. It gives me more artistic control. I can get the curtain to look exactly the way I want it to look, to lay exactly the way I want it to lay. And usually, in my simplified style, it's a simplified way. I don't want the curtain to look 100% realistic. I bring this up because when I stream 3D modeling on Twitch, I get a lot of questions about this, why I choose to model certain things that can be simulated. For example, ketchup on a hot dog or a pillow and a blanket on a bed. Spoilers for a future video. Now that I'm done with bigger pieces of furniture, I'm adding smaller details. Things like a shower head or a faucet in the bathtub. Things like that are crucial for the room to look lived in look like there is an actual person who could be using this space. This is what excites me about 3D modeling. You can create different scenarios, you can tell different stories. This one is about a person who just got back from work and uh, probably had a very difficult day. So they decided to chill in the bathtub, read a book, drink a glass of cherry juice. That's why I'm adding things that add personality to the space. Things like these candles. Making them mismatched tells you a little bit about the person who owns them, tells you a story, but also it's just really good for composition. Having three of the same candle would be just kind of boring. Here you can see me make candles out of some cylinders. I'm just using a combination of extrude, adding some edge loops and beveling things to see if I can get a shape that I like. You can also see that I modeled the flame instead of using particle effect or some texture of a flame because it's a stylized piece and I can just add some emissive material to it and it's gonna look good. Here to create an emissive material I'm just using a simple principle BSDF and changing the emission color and strength. Notice that strength can go over one, you just need to enter a number there manually. To make candle wax I also used principle BSDF, I just upped subsurface scattering and chose an appropriate color. Generally, I use Principle BSDF as the base of my shaders for basically anything. I think that's what it was actually made for, just to replace a bunch of different materials so that you can make things like glass with it. Speaking of glass, here's me making a glass material out of Principle BSDF. I just play with specular roughness and transmission, and I adjust the color a little bit, because you don't necessarily want 
realistically transparent glass with no tint in a stylized piece. To add wine, I mean grape juice, I copy the inside of a glass and shrink it a little bit. Here's a fun tool that I recently learned exists in Blender, Curve Knot. If you go to add-ons and you enable Curves Extra Objects, that's an add-on that comes with Blender, it's just not enabled by default. Then when you add in a curve, you can choose Knot, and it can give you all these interesting shapes. I'm using it to make one of those fancy woven rugs for the bathroom, but I think you can use it in a lot of different ways. If you have any ideas where to use it, uh, leave them in the comments down below. I'm interested. Remember how earlier I said that uh, we don't need two of the same candle? I changed my mind. I wanted to add something on the window and modeling an extra object is not always the way to go. Sometimes you can just copy a candle that exists and uh, change its height a little bit. That's what I usually do a lot. The last thing that I wanted to add to this scene is something green. I think there is nothing more cozy than having a giant green plant in the bathroom. So that's what I'm doing. I think it helps to break down the rigidity of everything else, of all the man-made objects in the scene. I'm just making a leaf and using solidify and subdiff modifiers to get this shape. And then I adjust them so that they don't look perfect and all of them look a little bit different. I manipulate some vertices using proportional editing to give this plant some imperfections, because none of the organic objects are gonna look stiff, right? We need some imperfections. I'm constantly checking what the plant looks like from the camera angle. This is the only angle that I care about. I know that this is not gonna be an environment that a player could walk in, it's just an illustration. I don't want to add details in the places where a camera won't be able to see them, because then I can just make two scenes instead of one that's perfect from the angle that nobody will see. Speaking of adding organic objects to this otherwise rigid looking interior scene, this bathtub needs some foam. If you watched my previous tutorials on NVIDIA Studio YouTube channel, the New York Diorama ones, you might remember this technique. It's just a displace modifier that we use to make crowns of the trees. This is the same thing I'm doing with the foam. Here I'm just playing with different texture settings to get the look that I want. I also adjust the foam after I got the shape right when I see the other objects in the scene. I don't want any overlapping compositions. You don't want one object to end exactly where the other object begins. This is what I was having with the faucet of the bathtub and the foam. That's why I moved it a little bit, just adjusted so that it looks perfect from the camera angle. Since it's a miniature scene, I wanted to add some depth of field. I think it will help us sell the toy look of the scene. The last thing I do before rendering is play with some compositing. I add a multiply node with ambient occlusion, color it a little bit, and add a glare node to add bloom. I moved some things around and here's our final result. A cute, miniature, cozy bathroom scene. Thank you for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video when we're going to be modeling something very cute.